Hello everyone, I am Tacit, and today I'm going to be going over the new Gems of War mythic of the Sparkinator. So, this mythic has basically three release dates, two Mondays ago if you bought the bigger pass, uh, the most recent Monday if you ended up buying the standard pass for uh, Campaign 9, and uh, free to play you'll be able to get it either during uh, Soul Forge within the next several months, or whenever the next Adana event rolls around you'll be able to get it in the event key drop table. As far as this troop is concerned, or how you get it, of course, uh, the main way currently is from uh, having completed out the current campaign pass that's going on for the rest of today and tomorrow. Unfortunately, it is a little bit of an underwhelming mythic, though not completely useless, though very close. Basically, every individual aspect that he does, something else does better. However, he is the only thing that kind of combines them together, so he has some viability in that regard. Uh, but overall, bomb gems have been uh, probably the most underwhelming power gem we've had, and uh, doing a bunch of them is pretty much no different. Uh, so as far as what he does, he has a very gloomly flag ability where he steals a bunch of armor from all enemies and then creates 10 bomb gems and then explodes a single gem. Uh, this can be good if, you know, all those bomb gems get exploded, but there are a lot of times where that one random explosion does not hit a single one of the bomb gems, or even if it does, it doesn't connect to all of them, and this ends up giving the enemy a lot of potential uh, value. Uh, whenever this does work correctly, and he actually uh, doesn't explode, that explodes all 10 of the bombs, and then he basically gets to, like, double steel armor, that's kind of nice, because you basically get to do a, um, almost like a Megavore kind of mechanic. Uh, it doesn't, like, guarantee tear everything. However, he does also get to accumulate the armor, so you could use it for some boost ratio stuff. So, uh, it, it's not horrible. It's just so ridiculously inconsistent that there's pretty much no situation where you're ever going to bring it out compared to more consistent options within the game. Uh, it does have some uh, overall reduction. It's pretty much the category of just stone hammer and all those. Uh, it's basically the category of super tanky mythics that basically are never worth using except for like the very niche uh, instances. Uh, his final trait unfortunately also didn't get anything too good. It just gets a little bit more uh, armor whenever taking uh, red gems. And most abilities you do around him do not necessarily center around taking a lot of red. You might hear it there, but it's going to make a pretty minuscule amount of armor gain but nonetheless let's go over a couple of teams just kind of showing it uh i kind of been showing these initially in explore 12 and uh, i think we're gonna keep doing that <laughs> because it uh, kind of works out quite nicely so we're gonna start it off uh from the top we have uh, three teams to show here uh, the first one that we're going to be doing here is a pure adana team so four times adana it is not four times mech however as we are utilizing tesla uh, of course tesla one of the best things that you can synergize specifically from the kingdom itself uh that you can end up uh, doing for it Mostly due to its boost ratio. Uh, biggest issue with a Tesla is more so that um, you're not actually getting any more overall value from the Mythic. So what I mean by that is you're stealing armor, but the amount of armor in play is still the same. So even though we just got a bunch of armor right there, uh, it's mostly just moving their armor onto us. It's not actually giving Tesla uh, any more damage than uh, what it would already have. So I'm just going to take a little bit of mana here. He's going to poke us, but I think we're pretty much good to go. Uh, we have Tesla ready. We'll hopefully get a kill there. It does. Perfect. He doesn't get a cast. And then throw down our Tesla. That kills out almost everything else. Hopefully we'll get an insta-kill on this. Um, this is a very niche weapon, uh, but it does have a 20% chance to insta-kill the first ally, which uh, occasionally can do some pretty good value. But uh, overall is uh, not used too often uh, because you, you pretty much only ever use it when you're using a pure mech. So this is the main thing I don't really like about this uh, mythic, I would say, overall. Um, a lot of weird bomb gems end up getting put onto the board. Uh, things that you just can't do anything about that just kind of linger there for quite a while. If you don't have a proper like uh, destroy option on your team. This particular one, uh, obviously the other builds, uh, we do have ways to uh, deal with that. Though this particular one that we're using right now does not have a... Uh, particularly good way to end up doing so. So we got rid of all of his summons. Unfortunately, he did get summons there. Uh, speaking about tank mythics as well, this is the other useless tank mythic. Uh, one, uh, there's basically a whole category of them. Uh, so this is actually kind of good that we have him for this battles. This is Champion of Guard. Uh, he gains a bunch of uh, durability and does some spam and everything. But uh, as you can see, his whole team behind him kind of died. And that's generally the problem with a lot of these uh, super tanks is um, they don't really do much. They kind of just sit there kind of blocking up some mana. Like, yeah, they live a little while, but that's, like, all they do. <laughs> like, they don't really do anything beyond just kind of surviving there for a little bit. Which is pretty much the whole downside of the entirety of the mechanic uh, across everything in the game. That's not exclusive just to uh, this mythic, of course. But uh, everything under that category of troop uh, tends to be pretty much like that. Where it kind of just stays there and uh, does a little bit here and there, but not really much. Uh, this next one does end up utilized for a little bit more uh, damage. So this one we're going to be doing a attack gain version. Uh, we're also using Throuse and Mana Accumulator, so we should be perfectly fine on uh, mana. So we shouldn't have as much of an issue compared to the previous battle here. So we'll simply just take some purple, throw this down, and uh, we'll be able to get things rolling. 
tanks right here. We steal a bunch of armor. Ideally, we get all of the explosion. Really nice. That's what you want to see. Uh, we're actually going to do it again just to kind of get set up here. Um, so we're going to go and uh, do this one more time just to get a little bit more armor. Ideally, landing an extra turn. Did not land it. He took a little bit of our armor. So you know what? I'm actually going to do it one more time just to make sure we have a good amount. Uh, hopefully get a nice explosion. But no, it missed again. Uh, but we'll go give him a bunch of attack based on his armor. And ideally, we have Yavandra alignment. If we don't, we could just wipe uh, board. Though we can also wipe board with Yavandra, so we'll do that. Um, one other interesting thing about Yavandra, and one of the reasons I actually wanted to show it with her, uh, you could technically put any skull spammer here, but the main reason I kind of wanted to put Yavandra is uh, she has the same mechanic, but better. Uh, Uber Doom skulls are literally just bomb gems, but they can be connected with skulls, and they do 10 damage extra instead of zero. Uh, but yeah, they're just bomb gems. If we go destroy, boom, it'll count as a bomb. Or, you know, it still does the same explosion range as a bomb. Uh, there's pretty much no difference in that regard, so that's pretty cool. She also gets a new skull kind of follow-up too, which ideally we'd get skull alignment on. Not really helping us too much here, but uh, we'll get our poke, one more poke, and it should kill it out, and he's dead. And uh, we mostly did that to uh, race his attack at the one-to-one, -one, and uh, we could use the yellow storm in order to get the Evandra alignment. So overall, not horrible. You could use any skull spammer you want there, but this ends up utilizing the light storm to get the uh, convert there. And Uber Doom Skulls are basically just better bomb gems. Anyways, uh, lastly here, we have the low rarity team. So this one was actually kind of funny. Um, this one, you spam Satite Warrior onto uh, the troop itself. So uh, similarly, we'd want to go directly... Oh, wait, yeah, never mind, that was extra turn. Oh, I didn't take it for a second. But we want to go directly, go cast this, and then we basically just keep spamming it with Setite Warriors. So Setite Warrior main mechanic is that it gives a bunch of armor to an ally uh, and deals scatter damage equal to the uh, ally's armor. So we could just use his very high armor value and, well, just do a bunch of damage to the enemy. Uh, actually, I do want him to get a little bit higher stats before he did that again, so let me go do that. Should have taken those skulls first, but well, well. And now we just double Setite, and uh, this watch should be the quickest win. I always find it funny when sometimes his cheapest team gets the quickest wins. <laughs> But due to lower mana costs, it, it happens sometimes. Anyways, let's go show uh, in PvP once. Um, I don't think I'm going to do all these in PvP, but let's go to the one that worked out the best. Though it could completely tear apart against a pure skull spam team. I don't know, which one of these would be best uh, opted for dealing with pure skull spam? Uh, probably Spark Tank? I'll try Spark Tank. Let's see how good he is at actually tanking. Uh, if I had to guess, the answer is no. <laughs> but let's see. Let's, get, let's give him a shot. Um, so he has the little convert there. That's not really going to do too much, so we'll just ignore it for now. Uh, hopefully that doesn't become a factor. Uh, ooh, uh, Okay, that's better. Okay. <laughs> I just didn't want him to give him alignment. Okay, uh, let's go take the skull there. Oh no! He got alignment from Sky! No! <laughs> Uh, how do we risk this? I think we throw this down and hope we get lucky. Also, he got a stun on us. That's not ideal. Uh, okay. We're in okay position now. Still in a very bad position overall, though. Uh, but we'll take that. Though it's heading in the right direction. I think we want a bomb again. Oh, do we have... Yev oh, we have Yvandra alignment, though. I didn't actually give him his buff yet, but uh, we, we gotta go for the Yvandra there. Uh, we have to go for this and hope we get lucky. Come on! Okay, that's good. Um, a lot of mana. Didn't do too much, though, surprisingly. Okay, uh, we do have an uh, extra turn there, so we'll grab that. Anything else we could do that's weird? I go attack buff you, finally. Uh, I probably should. Uh, what's he doing now? He's doing purple to red and brown to skull. That does very little. He'll take a poke. Is that it? I'm pretty sure he's just taking a poke. So I'm going to go do our buff now. Then we go clear out the board and then we win because we just do Yvandra. Oh, wait, I forgot Divine Shpala had mana, though. <laughs> I thought you were already dead. Whoops. I was looking at only the other cast. Uh, I think that's still fine, though. Unfortunately, he did lose the Mythic that's supposed to be our entire team, though. But uh, it's fine. Evandro is just him, but better. <laughs> uh, let's see. We'll go for that again. And uh, here, have another one. There we go. But yeah, she basically is it, but better. Uh, not with as much reduction, obviously, though. But obviously, you don't gain, like, a billion armor. But it is one of the worst stats to be gaining. Uh, you know what? Let's we'll, we'll just do all of them. So, Sparkalo. Uh, let's go do this one against this one. And then we'll go end it on the first one. He's actually kind of like that format for showing mythics now. We kind of started it with the previous mythic, and uh, we might just start doing that for every mythic now. Um, do it, like, once uh, each one of them and explore it once each one of them in... Uh, PvP. It kind of works out. Shows them in uh, a little bit wider range of uh, what they can do. This is personally my favorite, I do have to say. Out of, like, every build that you can end up doing around this thing. Um, I don't think you'd ever really go out of your way to bother using this thing. But uh, if you were to, um, this is my personal favorite, I would say, of all the builds that uh, we have shown in this video. All of which are in the description below if you want to copy-paste any of them. Although we might end up losing this one. <laughs> There is a chance we do lose this, but it's mostly because he is disabling us like crazy, gosh. Um, so I'll give it a bunch of armor. We have uh, this in a very safe location, so we keep set tighting it. Uh, he did get disabled there, however, we don't actually need to keep casting his ability. We just need the set tights to actually do something, and uh, we should be fine. 
All right, unfortunately, he just got a really good disable there and got the mana drain because he got the kill. That's so unfortunate because it retroactively retargets the next one. So I might end up losing because of that. Let's see. What do we even need here? We'll go take a brown. We ideally want purple, of course. Uh, ooh, okay, that's huge. We get that. Uh, you... Oh, no, I needed that. Okay, he did a summon. He also transformed us into a dude. <laughs> no, the bomb. Oh, gosh, I hate that so much. That random explosion just does so little. It does so little when it misses and does literally nothing. Um, I think our best bet at this point is to get set tight, but he's blocked on... Uh, okay, now he's not. Actually, that actually just helped us. <laughs> Pretty sure that just helped us because we're not blocked on green anymore. Um, so we're actually in a really good position right now. The biggest issue is Hero Submerge. Uh, it's actually kind of in our way. Uh, do we let him skull poke us here? I believe we do because this should be enough to wipe out pretty much his whole team except Hero. And uh, now we deal with Hero directly. Uh, actually, I probably should have went for Explosion there because he had Barrier up, so that skull did pretty much nothing. Actually, if anything, it did a bunch of damage back to us because of Reflect. Uh, purple, we normally would have needed on this team. However, we don't anymore. Okay, isn't it a 10% chance? How high is this 10%? That is 10%, right? This is like the second or third time it's summoned one. Come on, go through the things. 10% chance to summon a Quasit. It has done so, I'm pretty sure, every cast this battle. <laughs> oh no, our team! It died! We actually lost due to Quasit summon. That is insane. I, I think we could win out if we like really, really tried. But, um... I don't think we were going to. <laughs> Not in any kind of quick time. Anyways, uh, let's go fight a Saturg and Zugoth team with Essence of Evil. But yeah, essence of, those like mass um, negative effects, they can really get you sometimes. Uh, normally you can kind of build around it by having like double stealthy and other teams that kind of do that. But uh, you got to be careful around them. They are pretty devastating. So he's going to get a cleanse. It doesn't actually do anything. It also disables us if we had certain types, but uh, we don't have those types. I think it's Damon and Undead. Um, okay, so we mostly need green and blue. Unfortunately, neither of those two colors are currently available on this board, so we'll just take some brown and get that up. Ideally, we just randomly get a kill here. I'm going to take blue first just so we can kind of get things going. Um, so we're going to go for this. Ideally, we kill something important, and that is huge. We got hero down. Um, Zuko's probably a little bit bigger of a threat here. I don't think we're necessarily going to need to go for it here. Uh, one nice thing, if we can get this uh, to cast a little bit early, is we can actually maintain the amount of armor that's in the battle. Doesn't look like we'll particularly be able to utilize that this time around quite so, though. Um, so he's just going to go... let's see. You know what? I'm gonna risk the new mythic. He's just trying to show the new mythic. Let's see if he can actually do something relevant. Go! Give me mana! You failed. <laughs> oh, I hate it so much. But, um, yeah, it's it's too inconsistent to use. I, I can't think of a single time you are realistically ever going to bring this out instead of something more consistent. Like, if you want armor tier, you're going Megavore. If you want armor steel, you're going gloomly for like anything. <laughs> the gloomly is probably the closest equivalent because it's impervious and skull reflect. Uh, it kind of does what he does, but with impervious instead of some uh, skull and spell reduction. Um, if you want man accumulation, obviously there's like a billion and a half options that do that in different ways. Um, so there isn't really much of a need to bring it out unless you just really want to mess with bomb gems, which uh, so far I would say is the most underwhelming gem we've ever had for um, power gems in the game. However, the fact that it's been underwhelming is actually kind of a good thing. Because it's not bad, it's just not good. <laughs> like, it's it's not Lincanthropy, uh, at least. Like, Bomb Drums are a pretty non-intrusive gem, which is kind of nice. Um, uh, compared to some that we've had in the past that were um, very exceedingly annoying. <laughs> it's a very low-impact gem. That's basically just weaker uh, Uber Doom Skull in a sense. But anyways, that is the new Mythic. Overall, if you did not buy the pass, you are missing out on absolutely nothing other than a little bit of Donna upgrading. <laughs> But yeah, it's it's definitely the weakest of the three Adana Mythics by far. It's not even close. Um, it's somewhat usable if you do it with like armor boost ratio stuff. There's Tesla, there's the Sentinel, there's um, like that one Pry Troop thing that boosts based on ally armor. There's like a few of them here and there. But uh, overall, it's not really... Oh, Set that Warrior, obviously. Um, like there's a few things that can. It just really isn't worth doing compared to many of the other mechanics that exist within the game. He does a lot of things very averagely. And a lot of mythics or a lot of troops in general that end up doing this tend to just never get used because the things that sp specifically do each thing the best tend to get used instead. And uh, things like this just aren't consistent enough to really justify being used in any game mode. Um, if you were to use it in any, I'd probably say um, maybe Explore 12 because you can kind of do like an attacking kind of thing on it. 
But uh, with like uh, even just Wild King that we just got uh, yesterday, like comparatively to something like that, like you'd get so much more speed just doing that or Lord of Slaughter or some other skull spam team. Like just to buff that thing's attack and try to do some skulls is going to be relatively slow uh, compared to uh, other options. And even doing like the double set type, that was probably the quickest one I think we had for Explorer 12, doing the double set type. By that point, you know, you could just run Phoenicia, you could run... Um, um, Rowan, you can run, um, why can I not remember his name? The one that does true damage AoE that gets mana back. Why can't, Scourge of Honor. Oh, you can do Scourge of Honor for that multi-cast kind of thing. Obviously, you can just run Zugop. I'm starting to mention, like, AoE options. But, um, yeah, it's, it's just not going to work out overall. But anyways, guys, that's the Mythic. Um, if you have any other questions, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. If you do want to mess around with any of the teams, uh, they are all in the description below as well. And I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye, everyone, and thanks for watching.